no way we finally get to drive the 2019 Corolla but this just isn't any Corolla this is the XSE version and that's gonna mean a couple things manual look at it look at it Hey guys, welcome to the Thursday video. We're back with another car review. Today we got the 2019 all new Corolla hatchback. You might be thinking, why are you all amped up about a Corolla? Well, this just isn't any Corolla. This is the Corolla XSE. So what does the XSE mean? The XSE seems to be the Corolla that's gotten its personality back. So, and you might be thinking, when did the Corolla ever have a personality? Well, you gotta think way back. Think back to the AE86. The AE86 is a tuner classic. That thing has a cult following, and in many's opinion, is the last time the Corolla was any good. It was rear wheel drive, it had about 128 horsepower, it had four wheel disc brakes, and all that doesn't sound great, but at the time, that was a big, that was a big deal for a little Econo box. And aside from that, rear wheel drives, it was a fun car. And a lot of people drift with them nowadays if you can find them. And that's the key word, if you can find them. It's really hard to find a clean example of an AE86 anymore. And a lot of people love those cars. The Corolla had some personality. You could have some fun with it. You had a manual transmission, rear wheel drive. The thing looked pretty decent and people had a lot of fun with them. I mean, tuners, tuner guys, car guys went crazy for those. You know a car, you know a car is an enthusiast type car when people knew it by the code name and didn't just call it a Corolla. By now you guys know I love Toyotas, I worked for Toyota obviously, um, but my one beef with modern Toyota is they don't do anything fun anymore and if they do it's in conjunction with another company. It's like they can't do their own fun thing anymore. So when this 19 XRS hatch came out, I think just solely off of looks there was a lot of anticipation, there was quite a bit of hype. Come on, wind it out. I wouldn't call it hype, but my goal today was to find out if this car was worthy of the curiosity. And I'm just excited that Toyota's trying to start giving some of their cars a little bit of personality again. Just, it gives me hope. Really the only fun car, I mean now the Supra's coming out, BMW, but aside from that, the only fun car Toyota's had in seemingly ages is the FRS, the GT86, whatever you want to call it. And we all know that that's really nothing more than a rebadged Subaru. So is this finally Toyota coming back and creating something fun for us again? I think it's a start. What do I mean by that? All right, so we'll start with the 2019 Corolla. You look at it and it's just an attractive looking little car. To me, it's very Mazda 3-ish. It just looks like a car that wants to have fun. It looks the part, it looks sporty, but can it deliver? And I think if you look on paper, and I've said this a million times in other videos, numbers on paper have done an injustice to the modern car world. In a world where you go on YouTube and you see a car that, you know, all day long you can find cars that have 1,000 horsepower, 800 horsepower, 1,500 horsepower. So you look at those kind of stats, and then you look at stuff on paper, and people aren't factoring in the chassis of the car, how it handles, any of that. They just look at the numbers. And if you look at the numbers for this, to be honest, it looks pretty pathetic. This thing is a two-liter four-cylinder with a six-speed manual transmission, which is what I was most excited about. And it makes 168 horsepower, which, it's 2019, guys. Come on, pull it together. 168 horsepower, I think they can do better than that. So again, so you're looking at 168 horsepower, 150 foot-pounds of torque. The red line is about 6,800 RPM. So it isn't a super high revving little motor, but I've found that the sweet spot kind of when you feel the torque, all 150 foot-pounds that it has, kicks in is right just about five grand. You get, your, you get the power out of it. And it's not, you know, this car would be something you would probably, as far as a sporty economy car, I think people are gonna be quick to compare this to the you know, the modern SI and stuff like that. And I don't know if that's a good thing for Toyota because let's be honest, the SI is so good. And I just reviewed a 2017 Civic SI. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. It has a lot more personality. The motor revs higher, it revs faster, it winds out quicker. You get more power out of it, obviously. But I think Toyota's on the right track with this car. It makes me hopeful for the future because the Corolla is trying again. Now, if you think back to 
2002, 2004, the Corolla had tried at that point in time as well. They created something called the Corolla XRS. The Corolla XRS, arguably in my opinion, had a better motor than this did. They made a little more horsepower technically, they were rated at about 170 horsepower, but it was the motor that Toyota developed for Lotus to put in the Elise. Obviously no supercharger or anything like that on that one, but it was a really peppy motor. Those Corolla XRSs had quite a bit of personality, and to me, you go from 2000 to 170 horsepower, and it seems like you're trying to get into a fun car again, and it makes virtually the same power and has a way lower red line. Yeah. But I think the problem with the XRS, and they didn't sell that great, stupid as it sounds, is they didn't really look the part. And to me, I don't really care as much about that. The car was fun to drive, it had personality, it handled, you could wind it out. It was a fun little car, it was a high strung little Corolla, but it looked just as Manila as every other Corolla on the road. This car looks the part, it looks fun, and I think that's what got people's attention. And you can option these things out at the dealer with different TRD add-ons and make them look pretty cool. But is it gonna get any better? I'm really happy that the Corolla is trying again. I really like that. I appreciate the attempt to make it fun because let's be honest, the last couple years Corollas, they suck, I hate them. They have no power at all. They have a CVT transmission that has fake shift points in it. So they, it, they just feel awful. I hate them. They're Manila looking and they're just no fun. This thing in comparison, it looks the part, it looks youthful and it has a manual transmission again. So you can control your own gears. And as far as handling goes, this thing, I can't really make sense of it, really. Um, it's got a really weird sensation. Obviously, it's a little wider than the outgoing sedan. There is virtually no body roll, which being wider is going to help, but aside from having no body roll, it just feels... Fuck. Well, I, I apologize. I was cruising down the road. Now I'm just on some random gravel road right now because I got off the highway because I'm cruising down the road and a sheriff went right by me. I was going about 67 in a 55 and I saw him slam on his brake. I thought, oh, that's just what I need. Get pulled over in this thing and get another ticket, especially after we just got popped in the Prius. It's just not something I need right now. So I threw you guys in the back quick because the last thing I want them to see is me filming a video. Anyway, so after we get off this back road here and I figure out where the hell I am because I just turned off quick, um, we'll get back to the video. So I'll get you in just a second. All right, like I said, that was too close. We're back and I don't even remember what we were talking about. Handling. So the handling of this thing, it's a really weird sensation. I feel like there's virtually no body roll, but it almost feels like it kind of snakes. It's very linear. It doesn't tip around. There's no body roll, like I said, but it feels like it feels like the steering is just a tad behind you. It's it, The steering feels pretty good, but it just feels like the car kind of snakes behind you after you make a decision. But I do like that it doesn't feel like there's really any body roll in the thing. So again, I really appreciate that Toyota seems to be trying with this thing. But I really just hope this isn't just a little teaser. I hope that it ends up actually becoming something. And what I mean by that is the Prius, and yeah, I'm gonna make a comparison to the Prius. The Prius just adopted all-wheel drive. The new Priuses, you can get an all-wheel drive, and a lot of the Lexus models are going to turbos. So my hope with this car is that it keeps looking good like this, and like I said, they're trying, it handles pretty good, it has a manual transmission. I hope it gets a little power bump, and for the love of God, give us something with all-wheel drive. If Toyota created an all-wheel drive turbo version of this car, I think it would sell like crazy. I really like that it seems like it's going back to its roots. The Corolla was a fun car. When it came out, and a lot of people don't know that, when the AE86 was around, it was a fun, spirited little car. And I appreciate that about this car. It doesn't feel dead anymore. It doesn't feel, I'm not saying it's just like a WRX or Civic Si or anything like that. It's not that spirited, but it doesn't feel completely dead. It doesn't feel completely mundane anymore. And there's a couple cool features on this car. Um, I don't care about this, so I never really review the interiors, but the interior is way nicer than the outgoing Corolla. It looks way nice. These seats are pretty comfortable. Um, they got nice bolstering. I'm a little guy, so I still slide around a little bit, but it's not bad at all. Power, like I said, and we're into it right now, it leaves a little bit to be desired. I mean, like I said, 168 horsepower in today's world just isn't gonna cut it. And this thing weighs a hair over 3,000 pounds, so it's not like it's light for the class of car that it's in either. A couple little things that I like is it's got this IMT, which I can only imagine stands for Intelligent Manual Transmission. And if you push that when you downshift, it'll actually blip the throttle and kind of sort of rev match for you. Let's see if I can do it. It's on. 
I don't know if you can hear that, but it, it does rev match for you though when you turn that on. The other thing I like is that this car, you can turn the traction control off. So if someone did wanna say autocross this thing or anything like that, you can turn it off. I think my favorite comment about traction control in the modern vehicles still gotta be Matt Farah. He was reviewing the GT500 when the 13, 14 generation came out and he said, you know, it, the traction control, like it made a funny noise, but it didn't quit drift. That's something to me though that really sucks about modern cars. A lot of these safety features you can't turn off, and it really sucks if you're a, if you're a car guy, you know. And the IMT intelligent manual transmission, six gear you really never need. I mean, if you're cruising on the highway going 70, then yeah maybe. But other than that, I have only touched six gear on my way out to review this thing. All right, so I got my traction control off. We're gonna get going, then we're gonna do a little roll on, just see how it feels. Second gear, we do a little roll on. Like I said, 168 horsepower. So that's kind of my take on the 2019 Corolla XRS. I think that Toyota's on the right track with this thing. It's definitely not as boring as all the other ones were, and it definitely is a sharp looking little car. I appreciate the manual transmission and just kind of the feel this thing has. It handles pretty well. I wouldn't say it's a super entertaining car to drive, but the keyword is yet. I'm really hoping that as this thing progresses, this is the first model year of this, that this thing has an even bigger, takes an even bigger step in the enthusiast direction. So we can hope for that, fingers crossed. Otherwise guys, thanks for tuning into this car review for the Thursday video. Shift Rancher Peep, we upload every Sunday, Monday, and Thursday. Catch you next time guys.